Everybody, it's Kat, and I want to welcome you to this episode of Backstory Sessions. I'm joined today by my co-host, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Kat. Hey, everyone. How are you? Well, well, well. Today, we have, you know, the guest after our own heart, I feel like. Yeah. Should be interesting. She's a songwriter, and what else does she do? singer she's done a lot of different things but also she teaches like online creativity classes she's held like songwriting camps i you know i guess you would call it workshop slash camps for female songwriters oh that's cool yeah you know like i really like that when i mean not that you know, male songwriters don't need to go to camp or whatever, too. But <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, have them for them. But uh, it's just cool when, you know, I think that women out there doing camps for women uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I'm kind of envisioning something like rock camp, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's it. Yeah, I think it, I think it focused on songwriting and I know Casey Bellarini had been to the you know camp slash workshop and she had written a review that it really was very helpful so you know so she's producing some really good you're know, helping really good songwriters so. that's, that's Kelsey not Casey yeah Kelsey <laughs> Okay. Well, well, you know, I I could be calling anyone anything because this week, you know, is a a, a very busy week for me coming up because boxes is finally, I know we've been talking about it since January, but, you know, it's, it's time for it this coming Saturday. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it has had a mind of its own and, now like it seems the event just keeps growing and growing and it's just going to be really we're going to have a guest author and she's telling in the book she has a book published and she'll be speaking as well but you know about her experiences in the military and then we'll have some other authors also set up that have books about the theme of the play and so People can, like, when they first get there, you know, when the doors open early and people just, you know, get their food, drink, that kind of thing. But they can also speak, you know, with the authors, buy books, that kind of thing. Then we'll be having, you know, some music after the speaker, patriotic music. Reed Elliott, you know, we had as a guest. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he was on uh, Corporate Kindergarten. Yes, he is from Corporate Kindergarten, and he's actually going to be in the August show, too. He's really, he's so talented. But, you know, he's been on the Ellen show, and Loretta Lynn, you know, was his, like, proclaimed girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I met a lot of presidents. You know, he has a fascinating story, but... He's going to be singing Proud to be an American. And I really hope that, you know, he has his patriotic flag jacket on because, (laughs) you know, that'd just be super cool. But at any rate, you know, it, it will have a lot of, you know, I think paying respect to the military, to veterans. Mm -hmm. And so this will be a free show. Thanks to our sponsors. Well, you know, not our sponsors of Backstory Sessions, but our sponsors of Tri-County Mystery Mates. And so, you know, we will accept donations that will go to two charities, the Resilient Knights, and then there is 
Horses Healing Heroes out of Williamsburg, Kentucky. And that is also, you know, a program to help heal veterans with PTSD and things like that. So, you know, that ties directly into boxes. And it's so amazing then at the end of boxes will be veterans leading a talk back about, you know, the whole experience of the play. So I'm just super proud of the fact that the play can be a part of this program. And, you know, I think people will really be touched by it. And where is that again? So this will be at the train station in Corbin, Kentucky. And if you're listening, you can go to Eventbrite and claim your free ticket. You don't have to put credit card information or anything like that. You just, um, you know, get the free ticket. Now, you also can just come to the door. But if you get the ticket, then you get to have premier seating. So if you want to choose the best seating, then just uh, get the free ticket and you'll be admitted first. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, uh, so this is the, we're widening the season down, and this is the second to the last episode for this season. Can you believe that? I know. I mean, next week will be it. Yeah. The, due to the spacing of the episodes in the second half of the year, we're ending this season eh, maybe one or two episodes early so we can get two more seasons in this year. Yeah, I really think this ends up being one episode. So, you know, shorter than normal. So, yeah, usually we do. Otherwise, it was going to have to be like, you know, one season was going to have to be like 20 something episodes. And, you know, if we didn't space them out. So, yeah, that's never fun. (laughs) No, I mean, we, we have done that once before. And, You know, just with schedules and and, and even artists' schedules, you know, like they're touring or they're making movies and, you know, all of that. So for everybody, really, it works out better to break it down and give a, you know, a little space in between. So Mainly for us, though. Well, I mean, (laughs) you know, some are selfish. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But. You know, I just feel like we have now, you know, over 150 episodes. So um, we have plenty of episodes for people to come and listen. You know, maybe get caught up on, like, if you're a new fan, like Ghana, you know, we have a lot of new fans there. Um, And they can just, you know, get caught up on some episodes, like even start with number one and work your way through. Didn't we hear that there was somebody who was doing that? Yes, yes. Uh, as someone did tell me that they have started at number one, and we're going to, you know, catch up. So have it you... might be a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless they listen to, like, one a day. Well, yeah. I mean, even at that, though, you know, it's going to take them, like, over four months, five months, six months, you know. I don't really know how many we have exactly, but. Yeah, it's 100 and I I don't don't know what the number is. I'd have to go and look. Probably close to 170 or so. I don't know. Yeah, We're getting there. Yeah. So have you gone back and listened to any of the old episodes? I, I have at times, you know, it's like very interesting to hear us in the very first episode. We had no theme music or anything like that. And, right, yeah. You know, no guests either. It was just the two of us talking. Oh, interestingly, you know, it ties into this, like, because we really started this because of our creative endeavors. So <clears throat> with our guests. A, we we definitely are creatives too. Yeah, yeah. When we started, it was to so promote the writing projects that we were working. Yeah, and you know we were gonna just like keep everything fresh by, you know, whatever we were writing about would be the topic. Like we would just tie that into an episode. But I mean. You know, that did work for a little while, and then we just started getting guests. And 
Can you imagine how much we would have written if we had kept to that theme in the beginning? <laughs> well, either that or how short the podcast <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> yeah, we can only have can only have so many episodes about unstoppable. Well, I mean, I think we could have a lot, but you know, it's I mean, we didn't we've been through a pandemic and everything, you know, really. Yep. <laughs> We've uh, endured a lot of things, loss of my mom, you know, just a lot. You're moving. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, but we've continued and, you know, so I, I like that it, even podcasting itself brings out our creativity, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly a lot, a lot that goes into it, you know, just the promotion part of it alone takes a lot of creativity. Well, and, you know, connecting with guests, like, you know, you have a set of questions, but there's always that interaction, you know, that leads to whether you feel comfortable in, you know, being more creative or just sticking straight (laughs) to the script. Yeah, yeah, that's true. (laughs) Or sometimes you get the guests, you ask the first question and they like answer everything that you plan to ask them and <laughs> right yeah that happens a lot so yeah it'd be like hey you know we're so glad to have you okay and you know 20 minutes later <laughs> or they've <two> like, hours. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know they they've like told you everything so yeah. then you have to call up on your creativity but i i feel like i mean i think everything I can remember I've always been creative whether it was writing or singing or playing an instrument or just a way that I viewed things or thought of things I've just always been creative I mean I'd like to think that I have been but I don't know that that's always true I mean certainly more so since I've gotten into design and stuff like that that's been 20 something years so yeah, and then you like you know started writing, and yeah. that's definitely a creative side. Plus, you had that love hate guitar relationship. That's true. More so, hate I mean, than love. Those are all uh, things of creativity that that you had, and yeah, I mean, I think the the thing that I struggle most with related to that part of it you know the writing and stuff like that is the consistency so maybe our guest will have uh, some tips on how to maintain that i think she must have because you know she's teaching a course about it so uh, in order to even put a course together she would have to have that creativity (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And, you know, consistency to put all of that together so that people can yeah. you know, go through the modules. So, yeah, I mean, maybe she's going to like inspire and help us. Yeah. Well, that would be good because sometimes I need a good kick in the ass to get going again. Well, you know, I'd be more than happy. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, talk to Kirsty and see what she's got to say. This sounds good. Kirsty, I want to welcome you to Backstory Sessions. We are so excited to have you as our guest today. Well, thank you. I'm excited for you to be on your show. Well, so your mantra, whatever you do, stay inspired. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I find that very interesting. And of course, it sounds great. When did you, like, have you always just been a creative, inspired type? Yes. I, you know, I grew up, as I was telling you guys before we got on, I grew up in Ohio and uh, my whole entire life was always involved in the creative arts, was in musical theater, took piano lessons, voice lessons, dance lessons, you know, the whole nine yards and really enjoyed it my whole life. And then it evolved into becoming a full-blown songwriter. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm married to a producer engineer. We actually run an independent label called Lucky Sky Music down here. And so before I got into running the label, 
for 12 years, I hosted uh, an, an event called the Songwriter Girl Camp. And I wanted to really help girls and women understand more about the music business and just about staying empowered and inspired in their lives, creatively, whatever they were doing. You know, I used to say at my camps, you know, I, I just want to kick you into the creative, but I don't care if you want to be a chef. I just want you to discover who you are creatively because I think so many people don't make time for that. And a lot of times their creative gifts are right in front of them and they don't even realize, you know, what they don't even realize how important their creative gifts are and, and how much they can help others, you know, by digging into their own, if you will. So you had all these experiences. Did you have a creative family? Well, you know, this is really funny. My mom was the one that always really encouraged me to, you know, be be involved in lessons. And and she really helped me as a young child, as I was a, a really good singer as a little kid. And so she would get me involved, you know, in singing at garden clubs and, of course, singing in church. My dad played the accordion, but that was about it. <laughs> I mean, they loved music, but you know, it wasn't like they were concert pianists or anything, you know. And so it's just always interesting to me how people have talents and maybe, you know, their parents don't have them or grandparents don't seem to display those talents. But my parents were very encouraging to me and they they didn't slam any doors. You know, if if they they asked me, do you want to take piano lessons? And I was excelling at it. They they just kept on investing in that for me. And and then I went to college. I was a piano major in college at YSU in Youngstown, in Youngstown Ohio, and uh, started as a vocal major. But I had vocal problems, and so I overcame those. But in the meantime, while I was doing that, I decided to switch my major. So that's how I ended up being a piano major in school. So at what point did you realize that you really had a gift beyond just you know, just like I I guess most people are or maybe all people are talented, you know, in some creative arts. But how did you realize that you were beyond that, that this was maybe going to be your future career? Well, that's a good question. I think I think actually, you know, as I was getting out of high school and into college and realized that, you know, there was really nothing else I wanted to do except to pursue that. And you know how it is a lot of times for young people, if you excel in something that everybody thinks that's what you should do. And so you kind of listen to what adults tell you, or I did anyway. And, but I really wanted to do that. I always thought I would, because I was so involved in musical theater, I always thought I would go work in New York City, be on Broadway. You know, that was like a big dream of mine. And then it kind of took a left turn when I started getting more into pop music, you know, you know, writing songs as I got into my early 20s. And I didn't write a whole bunch until I got into my mid 20s after I married my husband and we moved to Nashville and we actually got hired as a songwriting team. by a publisher down here in Nashville. And that was really the first, you know, time that I wrote solidly you know, wrote songs solidly. But I, I can't ever remember a time in my life that I didn't want to pursue the arts and always thought that I would, be, you know, be in the arts for a living. You know, I'd grow up and be an actor. So, I'd, you know, and then as that evolved into, like I said, songwriting, then I thought, okay, well, now I'm going to be in the full-blown music business, you know, and this feels pretty good to me too, you know. So that's how that, that's how that kind of ro rolled for me. So what is the business side of it like when you're a creative? Well, you know, the business side is in the music business sometimes is very difficult. And, and especially for artists these days, because they have to know how to do so many different things, you know, to perpetuate their career. But in the case of a songwriter, because I've had hits in country, I had people that administrated my publishing so they would, you know, they would field licenses. They would do paperwork, that kind of thing. And I became really interested in that. And so I got very interested in publishing and how pub music publishing worked. And so that's just one part of it, for example, in songwriting. 
if you want to be a recording artist, you know, then they, you have to find people that can be a team around you. You have to find people that you can work with that can help you record your songs, record your music. And then, of course, you want to have a manager and you have to hunt, find somebody that, you know, really gets who you are as an artist and helps you get out there and, and exploit your talent, you know, touring, releasing music, that kind of thing. So you have to be, I think, today more than ever in the music business, really, really disciplined in your in your endeavors because it's it's so much for an artist to deal with these days you know what i mean like obviously you know releasing music on digital streaming platforms like spotify or apple music it's a lot just to you know submit a song to be released and so you really have to be organized and and if you're not like that then you have to find somebody to help you do that and either you're going to pay them you know, a stipend, you're going to put them on some kind of retainer, or you're going to pay them a percentage, you know, of what you make. So I always tell everybody, it's really important to have a plan. It's really important to have goals. And not just to say, you know, I'm going to win a Grammy or I'm going to be a recording artist, but then how are you going to do that? You know, you kind of have to peel the onion and figure out how you're going to manifest those different goals. And, and I always tell people I work with to think about what you're going to do in a week, in a month, in six months, in a year. Just think about three goals for each one of those increments, you know, time and figure out how you're going to make those goals happen. And I really believe by being organized and being plan and planning, planning these different steps in your career, you can really you can really get a lot done. You know, you can really feel yourself moving forward. Uh, well, I imagine like so you you get to take classes, you know, piano classes, voice classes, mm-hmm. you know, all of that. But the business side of it, like I don't really ever hear of like people saying, you know, I want to take business classes like when they're right. younger. So <laughs> I, I just uh, I was very curious, like how you navigated that and was it learning right. it. Learning as you go, kind of, I think, is what you're asking me. And and also, you know, meeting different people in the business, you know, you'd, you'd have trial and error. You'd have people in the business that would help you tell you what you were doing, you know, help you if it was right or if it's wrong. You know what I mean? Nowadays, so many colleges and community colleges and universities, they offer all these really amazing classes that help artists figure all of that out without having to figure it out themselves. And also there's so much you can, I mean, you can't believe everything you read, right? Isn't that that old adage, but there's a lot you can learn on the internet. There's a lot you can learn by listening to podcasts, right? You know, maybe joining different organizations is a really great thing for anybody listening out there. You know, you don't have to live in Nashville to belong to NSAI, which is, the Nash, the Nashville Songwriters International Association. It's for songwriters and publishers. You don't have to be to live here to do that. There's all kinds of organizations that offer, you know, maybe a class once a month, or they offer an opportunity to pitch songs to publishers, and you can live a thousand miles away and do it over the internet. That's the beauty part of now. Where when I was coming up, when I was a teenager. There wasn't anything like that unless I would have gone to, you know, Berkeley Music School. If I would have gone somewhere that was known for music, I maybe would have had the opportunity, you know, to take business classes. But when I was going to school at Youngstown State, it wasn't geared to any of that. So it was all trial by error for me. (laughs) Well, and it worked out well. I mean, (laughs) as you said, you got an interest in knowing the different um, Mm -hmm of it as you yeah. uh, were exposed to them. So Austin, that's a was a breakout hit for Blake Shelton. What inspired that? Like what's the backstory? How did that happen for you? Well you and Matt are gonna love this because it's it's kind of a funny story. So I have this friend that he left on his answering machine and not many people may remember what answering machines are. <laughs> But we are dating ourselves, aren't we, Kathy? And yeah. that, but uh, <laughs> well, not 
Well, even if he doesn't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> he knew somebody. He's seen one in an encyclopedia. But anyway, but anyway, he left on his answering machine. If this is Austin, I still love you. And it was a message to a girlfriend who had moved back to Austin, Texas. Now, let me stop and say that many people have asked me many times, who's Austin? What's Austin? You know, in that song. And it was the, the city, you know, like if you were talking to somebody to go, hey, New Jersey or you know what I mean? So he was saying, if this is Austin, I still love you. Meaning if she called that, she would know that he still loved her, you know, by leaving that message. So I was going to write with him and I said, you know, we should write that. He goes, oh, I don't want to write any more songs about my Jota love affairs. So you can have the idea. I said, I can have the idea. He goes, yeah, you can have the idea. So I took it to another co-writer who also knew this guy that left the message. And he said, he doesn't want the idea. And I said, no. So we talked about that idea for about, I don't know, five or six hours and wanted to make it kind of into a mini movie. And that's why the the choruses are different. You know, they're all different in the song. And so the sad thing is that the real life story did not end that way. <laughs> but the, the song ends the song ends, you know, more happy. But in real life, his girlfriend ended up marrying somebody else. <laughs> yeah. But but anyway, the song the song was so impacting to one of the A&R people at Giant Records that she she had put it on hold for Clay Walker and then he dropped it. And then she started working for Blake Shelton or with Blake and thought it would be great for him. So he recorded it. Well, then. He was on Giant Records and it closed, Giant Records closed, but he got picked up on Warner Brothers. And so the song just started going up the charts and people were so impacted by, you know, by what it meant, the, the story of true love and, you know, how love prevails and all that kind of thing. And so it just is always so moving to me when, you know, to this day, the song's over 20 years, you know, that when it was a hit the people are still so impacted by that song and how much it means to them. And that's really, you know, as a writer, as a creator, it's why you create your art, you know, why you write your book, why you write a song, why you paint a picture, whatever you're creating, why you create an amazing recipe that, that people love the food, you know, and that's what I'm always striving for as a creator is to create things that move people. I think it's important. 20 years. Uh, <laughs> Has it been <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Can you believe it? It's been over 20 years. And you know what, you guys said when Blake, you know, first came out, he was such a new artist. Nobody knew who he was. So the song, you know, became a number one and it was sitting there for a while on the charts at number one. And he really didn't get any interviews or he didn't have any television interviews. And when the song turned 20 years old, he had all kinds of interviews on television. He was singing the song all over the place on all different shows on TV because now he was, he was, he was famous and people knew who he was, you know, Thank but Blake Shelton is such, he's such a great guy. He's he, of course my favorite country artist and he's such a, he's such a great artist. And you know, the personality you see when he was on the voice and if you ever watched him on there, he's, he's really like that. He's really funny and fun and, you know, and I just think he's a great country singer and has a classic country voice. Do you get to interact with him still? I mean, uh, do you... no, not really. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've seen him. I don't think I've, I haven't seen him for a couple of years, probably maybe three years, mm -hmm. you know, seen him in person. But, but he, you know, he's obviously a very busy guy. And, you know, I don't know his comings and goings in Nashville, but obviously when he was, Filming the voice, you know, he he had to be out in L.A., you know. Right, yeah. So, so I'm just going through your website here and some of the stuff that uh, was sent to us. Did you have a podcast at some point? I do. I still do. It's called yeah. It's called Kirsty Cast, and I interview entrepreneurial girls and women. I interview a lot of songwriters and. Like I was t uh, telling you guys before, when I was hosting my song at girl events, it's kind of like a, an outgrowth of that, you know, because I just want to inspire other girls and women 
you know, to do creative things with their gifts and have creative lives and, and to show people, you know, there's all kinds of ways in the world to be creative. You know, you don't have to be a movie star. You don't have to be a singing star, you know, to show the world that you're doing something creative. You know, there, there really hasn't ever been a time that I've ever been anywhere in the world. I could go to the smallest place, the smallest town, and there's always somebody there doing something amazingly creative. You know, they're, ma- they're leaving their mark, you know, in, in a little town, you know, it's, it's just, it's their thing, you know, they don't, you know, they don't worry about, I'm sure everybody wants their art to be well-known and famous, but I just think that's the most amazing thing. There's just creative people and creative things everywhere, everywhere you go, you know, it doesn't matter where you go. And then you also have some courses available. Yes. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I have a online course called Spark Your Creativity. And it's all it's all about discovering different things about yourself as a creative. It has basically three sections to it. The first section is all about discovering what your gifts are and then identifying them and identifying which ones are the most important to you, the ones that move you the most, and then recognizing your true potential. And so the, the course has seven di- different modules and it has worksheets and videos and um, music. And then it also has bonus folders. And and it's good for anybody who's even a beginner or somebody that's even a pro. And I was really inspired, you guys, to write this course from the wonderful book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And if any of your listeners out there have never read this book, I highly recommend it because it's all about really exploring who you are discovering you know more about yourself i i read the book when i took a master acting class and so i really put a lot into this course you know about myself like what i did with my own creativity and with my own self discovery in regards to my potential and gifts and turned it into this course so i hope your listeners will check it out and you can find it on my website kirsty.com um, you can go there and find it so I'm curious, do you have anything geared towards, I mean, I, st- I kind of suffer with this, is the motivation and the, like, something to, like, push people along, because sometimes you lose motivation for what you're doing. And yeah, kinda, well, well, go ahead. go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it, it just kind of ebbs and flows, and... I was just wondering if you had any information available on how to like maintain it. Yeah. Well, I really think that one of uh, you're, you're asking me personally what I advise people to do. Is that your question? I'm just wondering if there's anything included in the course and if you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. 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 I always tell people that it's really important to always keep checking in with yourself making the time to spend the time with something that you really want to do, not saying, well, I'm going to wait until I retire or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it next year, that kind of thing. I mean, if it, if it moves you, then you should move on it. And it, it doesn't mean that you have to quit your job and drop everything to do something that really moves you creatively. You can carve a little time out every week, you know, have a space where you can go in in your house somewhere and work on it, where you can really, you know, focus on what you're trying to do, where you're not distracted. And one of the one of the coolest things that I learned from the artist's way that I still do is called the artist date, where you you think of something that you maybe wanted to do. Like, let's say you were always driving by this certain pottery class you know showroom you know like a place where you could take a pottery class you go well one day i'm just going to take that class you know that kind of thing something that really feeds your soul i just really believe that my course will really open people's hearts and minds to look at themselves differently and also to give themselves some self-care because being creative is such an amazing expressive outlet And it's also, I think, a form of self-care because we can all think of things that we, I mean, I can just say for myself, the thing that stops me a lot in my life is time, just 
you don't always have the time you want to spend on something creative. And so I think you owe it to yourself if you know you have a certain gift and you want to do something with that gift in your life that you owe it to yourself to spend time on it. I'd have to agree with you there. You got to just find, you know, find time and, you know, don't wait because time doesn't stop for anyone. So It's so true. What, like, for example, what's something that you and Kathy, what do you do creatively? I know running a podcast, it, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time yeah. and you have to create the questions and everything. But what are, what are some other things that you, you guys like to do in your life? So Kat has a cat has a business. It's a uh, mystery dinner theater kind of. Oh, cool! And, uh, I love it. Yeah, and I I write plays and have a couple books and you know that sort of thing. So I don't always. That's exciting. Yeah, I don't always find the time like you were saying. Just have to make it, and yeah, it just yeah. I mean, my you know my. I don't know. My path is kind of like I have a a job and you know carving out time after work and the weekends and stuff to write and I just find yeah. it difficult sometimes. So um. yeah, well, and and the thing that's beautiful about phones is you know if you're on your lunch break you can just record your idea in your phone and transcribe it later. What one of the biggest things that I talk about too in my course and it's the beginning of the course is, you know, getting out of your own way, you know, losing the fear to even start. Because so many times I think people are afraid to start being creative because they think it won't be good enough. You know, uh, they think, oh, the world's watching me and, oh, this stinks and nobody's going to like it and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and it and you know, we're, we're really always hard on ourselves. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things is getting out of your own way. And also, you know, the thing of there's there's so like, for example, in Nashville, you know, we live in such a bubble because everybody's always looking and watching what everybody else is doing. Well, that person got a cut or I didn't get a cut or this person got a hit. I didn't, you know, that kind of thing. And it's right in people's faces. But I think it's really important, you know, to keep the eye on your creative goal, even if it's very small and just you know, again, it's setting a goal for yourself and realizing, you you know, you can achieve something and nobody's going to keep a scorecard on you, you know, just do it yeah. and you'll feel a lot more joyful about it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more you're going to want to share it with people. And another thing to do too, is like, go find other people that are doing kind of the same thing as you. And then it's like safety in numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, so. <laughs> So that's a bit of advice I would give, but I hope everybody checks out my course and it's not very expensive and, and you can do it at any pace and you could do it next week and you could open it up in six months and you could do it again. And your answers will be all completely different because as creative people, you know, we all grow. We, we change our minds about something we create, you know, we, we write a song, we rewrite the verse, we write a chapter in a book, we, write more, yeah. you know, we, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I just, I just wish for everyone that they find time to be creative for themselves, because I think that's part of the unhappiness in the world is that, that people play the comparison game too much instead of just looking within and thinking, you know, what do I have in here that I haven't even touched? Mm. What can I, what can I do that, you know, is something that I, I've been a, been given this gift what can i do with it even if it's just for me you know yeah all right i'm gonna let cat ask one more question before you go and uh it'll... okay thank you <laughs> all right cat go ahead uh, i kind of had two questions or... only one <laughs> but when I... i'm sorry cat but you're gonna have to pick no i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> i'll creatively bind them into one <laughs> no but it you're like listening to your story and, and you remind me of Martha Graham and, you know, I used to, I used to teach there. So oh, wow. Never, but, um, you know, it's like that there's only one of you, you know, in, in the world, in the universe and your energy. Like if you don't, if you don't create with that energy, then that never exists. And yes, 
you know, so I always found that was very powerful. Like, yes, the motivator that, you know, you're keeping something that only you can make happen. So that's really well said. Mm -hmm. Um, But my question, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a lighthearted question. But then again, maybe not. I mean, I wanted to go back to the Austin song, you know, like, so the story didn't end so well for the, you know, (laughs) the guy that had that original idea. But, you know, then like he passes on a great idea for a song too. (laughs) So that seems like, did you ever like, you know, have a discussion after and him be like, you know, I messed up on that one or. (laughs) Yes. Oh, absolutely. At the number one party, he was like, I can't believe it, you know, (laughs) but, you know, the, but the, but the thing is always, you, you know, and we've all said this and even his publisher said, you know, if, if he would have written that song with you, it would have been a completely different song, you know, and that, again, the thing you were just saying about your uniqueness, you know, and, and I, you know, and it's really interesting. I mean, when you guys listen to it, uh, you know, when you listen to the song again or hear the song again. You know, in a way, the song's kind of theatrical in a sense, you know, because it's telling this story. And, it, I mean, you know, you know, it's kind of like musical theater, how it, you know, propels a story. And so that was what I was saying earlier. You know, the, the thing about having the three different choruses, you know, because it really it really propels a story along, you know. And and, you know, there's it's it's so funny because in Nashville, they have this these awards they, they're called songs I wish I would have written. NSAI does it. And there, you know, and there's always a song you hear it on the radio and you go, oh, no, why was, it? oh, why didn't I think of that? You know, that kind of thing. But again, it's, you know, the day that they wrote that or the days that they wrote that, whatever that song is, that's so amazing. You know, they were feeling something. There was something in the room. There was, you know, God magic whatever people believe in i believe in god you know it it can be really divine you know writing a song writing anything painting anything creating you know a recipe you know writing a play being an actress it, it's just it, it's just unbelievable the creativity that human beings have and i think you know that everybody is creative and when i do my talks you know when i go out and speak i always say you know creative people are weird and (laughs) they're really really weird you know and so everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me i am weird you know and there's nothing wrong with it because everybody thinks creative people are weird right and if we all think we're all weird then hey we're one big happy family you know (laughs) so but it's always great to meet other creative people and and for your listeners out there you know my mantra you know whatever you do stay inspired is it almost has two meanings it's like whatever you do whatever you're doing creatively stay inspired in it and whatever you do oh my gosh people whatever you do stay inspired you know you got to you know it's what it's what keeps the world going you know think about like things we see on instagram or i don't know if you guys take on social media tiktok facebook whatever When you see things where something just amazing is happening, you know, somebody's, you know, like in COVID when somebody would step on a balcony and sing a song and it was so moving because it was just so creative and it was so like unselfish in a sense, you know, it's cool. And I love it. And it, and it, have you guys ever been to Nashville? Yes, I have. Oh, good. Good. I was gonna say you gotta come now, Matt. You gotta get down here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's on the bucket list, you know. Get on down to Nashville. Yeah, we've been invited <laughs> like eighty times and still haven't. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't know. Who are you? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I understand. That's what I'm waiting for. But what's that? What did you say, Kathy? I'm waiting for Matt to come. So we. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, you go. I, I have a pretty demanding job up here, so uh, you know I don't get away very much. Well, I hope you, I hope you do sometime. Yeah, me too. So, can you tell us what's next for you? I mean, what... well, what's next for what? What's next for me is always, you know, perpetuating more of what I'm working on. Of course, you know, we're running this label and. We have an we have one artist named Tori Martin, and we have she's a writer, and we have another writer. 
we all write a lot of songs together. So I have some singles coming out on different artists this fall and, and, you know, to just keep spreading my message and uh, telling more people about my course and trying to write more great songs that move people, move artists, you know, to want to cut them. And, and I, that's, that's really what I'm working on always. And so I, I, ho- I hope that, uh, you know, I'm always putting the good vibes out, out there and, and just always hoping that all the, the best things come to the music that I create and, and it, re- you know, really moves people, it makes people feel something when they hear it and moves them to whatever action. If it's to listen to it again, if it's to record it, you know, just all those things. Because as a commercial songwriter, of course, you know, that's what we always are striving for. We're striving to get more commercial releases and it's it's kind of it, it, it's kind of a, a bug you know you catch once you have commercial success as a songwriter obviously you want you know you want more of it but yeah you know and and there's so many different international writers now that come to nashville and so had a lot of success in australia and mm-hmm. you know especially in australia a lot of australian artists come here and i, I write with a lot of different artists too yeah awesome yeah. All right. Well, we're going to let you go because we've kept you too long now. But uh <laughs> No, it was a fun conversation. Thanks for having me. Anytime. And I uh, and let me know when it come your podcast comes out and I'll promote it. You'll be actually your episode is coming out this coming Sunday. Is that correct, Kat? Yeah, Sunday. Oh, night. great. Great. Night well, send send me the link. Yeah. Okay. And we hope yeah. you'll come back to, and talk to us again. I mean, it's uh, I would love to. It's been an interesting conversation, and I'm gonna check out your course too. Please do. Yeah. All right. Well, you two have a wonderful, creative rest of the day, and whatever you do, stay inspired. You knew I was gonna say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care now. Bye.